Good evening, everybody. Um, I wanted to bring this article to you guys because I find this to be very important. I also have another article, and I'm going to go over that as well. Um, this first one, well, actually, first, let me start off by saying that I hope you are all well today and blessed and all of that. And I hope you all caught the video yesterday that I did. It's about the uh, United Nations... Um, quote, our agenda, or our common agenda, and they re refer to reinvigorating multilateralism, and it literally is just New World Order all on the front page of the United Nations, and they went over that at their uh, 75th um, meeting or whatever. So if you have not seen that video that I did yesterday, please, Please go and watch it, even if you have to skip to the end, sort of, where the uh, United Nations stuff is, because I did go over a lot of other things before that. Now, this here, when I was reading this, of course, of course, the first thing that came to mind was the Internet of Bodies. That is literally what they are messing with. That is what all of the technology is going towards. And you will be surprised to know who is involved in this. Actually, you won't be very surprised at all. You are going to be like, oh, that's typical. Because who has been spearheading this entire operation since its, be since its beginning? Not since the actual beginning of the overall operation, this, you know, the reset. If your answer was the World Economic Forum, you are correct. Scientists have successfully recorded data to DNA in a few short minutes, blowing older methods away, which can take hours and even days. And then, of course, they show you a... DNA strand, and they show some data in there, and this is, of course, part of the Internet of Bodies. Global data production is estimated to reach 463 exabytes per day by 2025, which is the equivalent of 212,765,957 DVDs per day per the World Economic Forum. Underlined. <laughs> also, a lot of things seem to converge at the year 2025. Um... Every time I read something about 2025, I always think of the Deagle.com report and the future Navy map of America 2025. Our existing data storage systems, which can hold only so many zeros and ones and consume huge amounts of energy and space, cannot last us forever, putting us on the cusp of a serious data shortage problem that can only worsen over time. DNA-based data storage may come to rescue as an alternative to hard drives since our genetic code is millions of times more efficient at storing information than current solutions. Yeah, you know why that is? Because God is grand. We can mimic all day long. All day long we can sit there and toy with this and that, but we will never, ever, ever come close than the perfection of the human body and everything that was created on the earth. And we seem to be very good at destroying a lot of things, but that's beside the point. I'm afraid this recording app is going to go... seems to be lagging a little bit, but I hope it doesn't cut out because I will be very upset. Anyway, now in a breakthrough development... Researchers at Northwestern University Researchers at Northwestern University have devised a new method for recording information to DNA that takes minutes rather than hours or days. What do, what do you guys get from that? What do you get from that? Are they talking about storing data in our DNA? I'm sure a lot of people will line up for that. <laughs> The researchers utilized a novel enzymatic system to synthesize DNA that records rapidly changing environmental signals straight into its sequences. And this method could revolutionize how scientists examine and record neurons inside the brain. Faster and higher resolution recording. To record intracellular, intracellular, not inter, molecular and digital 
data to DNA, scientists currently rely on multi-part processes that combine new information with existing DNA sequences. This means that for an accurate recording, they must stimulate and repress the expression of specific proteins, which can take over 10 hours to complete. The new study's researchers hypothesized they could make this process faster by utilizing a new method they call time-sensitive, untemplated recording using TDT for local environmental signals, or TURTLES. This way, they would synthesize completely a new DNA rather than copying a template of it. The method enabled the data to be recorded into the genetic code in a matter of minutes. Nature is good at copying DNA, but we really wanted to be able to write DNA from scratch. Okay, so what does that remind you of? These people are trying to be as God. They are trying to mimic what God has already done. There's a special place in hell for these people. Northwestern engineering professor Keith E. J. Teo, the paper senior author, said the press release, the ex vivo outside the body, way to do it. Sorry, it's Frank Lee's texting me. Uh, wait, involves a slow chemical synthesis. Our method is much cheaper to write information because the enzyme that synthesizes the DNA can be directly manipulated. State-of-the-art intracellular recordings are even slower because they require the mechanical steps of protein expression in response to signals mm -hmm. as opposed to our enzymes, which are all... Sorry, Frank, I'm recording something right now, my friend. As opposed to our enzymes, which are expressed ahead of time and can continuously store information. And they just go on about this could be a potential solution to address the explosive growth in data storage needs, as well as carrying brain research forward. This is a really exciting proof of concept for methods that could one day let us study the interactions between millions of cells simultaneously, said Namita Bond, co-first author and postdoctoral researcher in Tayo's lab. If you look at how current technology scales over time, it could be decades before we can record an entire cockroach brain simultaneously with existing technologies, let alone the tens of billions of neurons in human brains, said co-first author Alec Callisto, who's also a graduate student in Tayo's lab. So that's something we'd really like to accelerate. These people are literally just unbelievable. The researchers are currently working on the genomic infrastructure and cellular techniques needed for reliable intracellular recording, and they hope that other engineers will be interested in the method and use it to record signals for their research. Let's all just start recording data inside people's brains. What, what does this remind you of? What does, this rem what does this remind you of? Time is short. These people are messing with things that we were never, ever supposed to even be able to see, let alone manipulate and create DNA from scratch, according to these people. So, let me bring one more thing up for you guys. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I have food making and I would like to go eat. Hospital system says it will deny transplants to the unvaccinated and almost all situations how terrible is this how absolutely terrible is this and didn't they just come out not long ago and say that they won't they can't accept blood or organ donations from people who took the thing so why this all this is is just tightening the wrench Tightening the noose, per se. They're trying to squeeze us out, and it's working for the most part, except for those of us who are unfazed. A Colorado-based health system says it's denying organ transplants to the patients not vaccinated against the coronavirus in almost all situations, citing studies that show these patients are much more likely to die if they get C-19. Okay, well, let's see if we can... Where's the studies at? Huh, let me see if we can find it. Oh, no, we can't. Weird. They almost never show them. You see health rules for transplants enter the spotlight Tuesday when Colorado State Representative Tim Geithner 
said it denied a kidney transplant to a Colorado Springs woman because she was not vaccinated against the coronavirus, calling the decision disgusting and discriminatory. Geithner shared a letter that he said the patient received last week from UC Health's Transplant Center at the University of Colorado's and Anschutz Medical Campus in the city of Aurora. The letter said the woman would be inactivated on a kidney transplant waiting list and had 30 days to start coronavirus vaccination. If she refused, it said she would be removed. So imagine that. Imagine waiting years sometimes for a transplant and not being able to receive one because you didn't take the, quote, you know, experimental gene therapy. Sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say partially what it is. I cannot help myself sometimes. But, yeah, I just wanted to bring those two to you guys. Didn't want to save them for the next video. I'm planning a live stream for some time this weekend. I haven't done one in a while. So, look forward to that. Also, if you haven't, please watch the video from last night. It is very, very, very important. God bless you all.